First of all, I want to thank all of you who've re reached out to me, to my family, to Rise, asking, how's everything in Israel? What's going on? We're praying for you. We're praying for your family. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Literally, I've, I've been overwhelmed by the amount of, of emails and text messages that people have sent, and I don't take this for granted. There's so many people around the world are thinking and praying about what's happening right now in Israel. It really touches my heart. I just want to give a little bit, a little update of, of what's actually happening on the ground. Uh, we're all being affected by this. Personally, uh, two days ago, I was uh, putting gasoline in my car at the gas station next to the entrance of Abu Ghosh. I heard several large uh, explosions turned around, and on the other side of the highway, I saw these these pillars of smoke going up, you know, and my, my optimistic subconscious, uh, my immediate reaction was, oh my goodness, I hope that's for construction purposes, you know, but everybody at the gas station started going haywire, uh, sirens were going off, and people were, were taking cover. Um, the next day, uh, we, we had a huge barrage of missiles uh, around 9 o'clock at night over the Tel Aviv area, and from the Veidan where I live, it was literally like, I don't know, for, for our American friends, you, you sing in, your, in uh, the national anthem um, to, about the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. I mean, it was, it was something from a Star Wars movie, literally just hundreds of explosions as these rockets are being fired at us from the Gaza Strip. And then we have the Iron Dome system, which is trying to take them out um, and, and working overtime at the moment. Over the last few days, over 1,200 rockets have been fired from the Gaza Strip to Israel including at, at Jerusalem, which, which is our capital city. So this is a very, very serious situation. On top of that, there's quite a bit of civil unrest. Unfortunately, um, some of our Jewish citizens forget that their Arab-Israeli neighbors really have nothing to do with Hamas and nothing to do with the current violence that, that's perpetrated against Israel and have been uh, angrily uh, demonstrating against, the, against their Arab neighbors at the same time there, there, are, there are more radical elements in the Arab-Israeli uh, uh, population that have forgotten that their Jewish neighbors really have nothing to do with, with this problem, uh, with, with these rockets coming from Hamas, and they've chosen to demonstrate against uh, 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 the, the Jewish sector society. So there's been this type of inter-ethnic, inter-religious, interracial violence to the extent that the police, both in Lod, which is uh, next to, close to the airport, which uh, it's an area that Jews and Arabs have lived in together for years in, in peaceful coexistence. They've had to put a curfew there uh, in the evening to prevent these demonstrations, uh, as well as yesterday in Batyam and other places. So it's a very, very uh, serious situation, both with uh, being attacked externally from Hamas in Gaza and then also the civil unrest within Israel. Where, where, how did this all begin and where did this all come from? You know, they, they, there were certain elements that created this escalation, but... The truth of the matter is that this is an ongoing kind of a rolling conflict that's been going on for the last 70 years. In a sense, Israel is still fighting its, its war of independence. You know, in 1948 and the time surrounding that, when, when, which we refer to as our war of independence, there, because of the violence, there was a huge population exchange. So 850,000 Jewish refugees were, were forcefully expelled from their homes around the Middle East, came into the fledgling Jewish state, received citizenship, residency, jobs, were able to create a life for themselves, whereas about 720,000 Palestinians either voluntarily left or were, were um, forcefully expelled from these areas and went into the Arab states surrounding Israel. And even though these were Muslim Arab states, just like most of the Palestinians, they never granted rights to these refugees until today throughout the Middle East. And even in the, in the disputed Palest uh, territories, what we call the, the West Bank in Gaza, there are still Palestinian refugees. That uh, their refugee status and mentality is, is reinforced by the United Nations, which, which still recognizes them as refugees and provides aid to them, as well as the, the radical uh, Palestinian organizations like Hamas, which treat them like refugees. 80% of the citizens, Palestinian residents of Gaza, are defined as refugees, both by the UN and also by Hamas. And this is a terrible situation because Hamas takes advantage of the situation by creating social uh, uh, welfare services and humanitarian services to these refugees. And, and then with most of the, the money that it receives as a humanitarian organization, 
from uh, from the international community, which comes it comes through Qatar, instead of focusing on building proper infrastructure in the Gaza Strip uh, and and providing for the needs like they're supposed to for these Palestinians, they purchase weapons, develop weapons, and stockpile weapons in order to attack Israel. And then every few years we'll have a flare up like this, and we just receive tons of rockets. On our uh, aimed at, at our and fired at, at at our civilians, the the people in the Gaza Strip because they're so much in this refugee mentality, Hamas has convinced them that look, it's worth it instead of taking this money and investing it in the Gaza Strip, which is not your final destination. This is like a refugee camp for you, even though it's been completely urbanized and it looks pretty much like a city. It's not a typical refugee camp. But this isn't your final destination, so let's take our resources and invest it in conquering, taking back the whole land of Palestine, which, which uh, when they refer to that, they're talking about the, the, what you see on, on the map today as the state of Israel. We'll invest it in attacking Israel, delegitimizing Israel, and eventually we'll be able to take back Palestine by, by violent jihad. And so Israel knows Hamas is doing this. Israel knows that Hamas is stockpiling these weapons, but... It can't just go in on, on, a, on a regular basis and to, to, uh, to carry out military uh, operations and take out this, this rocket firing capacity because of the way that would be unacceptable in the eyes of, of the international community and, and our diplomatic relations. So basically, it waits until we have a flare up like this when Hamas starts firing these rockets and then it responds and, and does everything it can within as short amount of time as possible to completely uh, destroy the, the Hamas um, military and, and rocket firing uh, uh, capacity. So, so we're in this cycle that, that comes up uh, time, time and time again. Now, you'll see in some of the coverage in the international news that it almost, you know, is presented as symmetrical. Well, the Israelis have claims against the Palestinians and now they're firing on them, and the Palestinians have claims against Israelis, so they're firing back. But it's important for our friends around the world to understand this is not a symmetrical conflict. It's asymmetrical in every way imaginable. Israel is a thousand times stronger than Hamas from a military perspective. Literally, we have the capability to completely obliterate the Gaza Strip, all the Palestinians living in there, and Hamas. We could destroy them within a matter of minutes, yet we choose not to do that. And when we go in and carry out these military operations, we drop thousands of leaflets warning citizens to leave certain areas where we're about to bomb because Hamas is active in there. We Hundreds and thousands of phone calls are made to Palestinians, please evacuate your building. We're going to take out the terror cells active in there. Hamas, on the other hand, is purposely firing Qassam rockets from the ground floor of, of high-rise residential buildings, hoping that either uh, uh, Israel will choose not to bomb those areas, or if it bombs those areas, Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, will be wounded, and uh, and then they can take pictures of that, send it around the world, and further delegitimize Israel. This is a complete war crime based on the Geneva Conventions, using uh, human people as as human shields. Also, a lot of the the rockets that have been, that fired from the Gaza Strip are very faulty and actually fall on and kill Palestinians. So the Palestinians in Gaza are suffering just as much as the Israelis. They're suffering from Hamas, from this abusive dict dictatorial uh, regime, which claims to, to serve their best interests, but really puts them, intentionally puts them in the line of danger. Uh, there are documented stories of Palestinians trying to leave these buildings once they've been warned by Israel, and Hamas keeps them there at gunpoint, hoping that if Israel uh, attacks, maybe someone will be killed, maybe they can send those pictures around the world. So it's not... It's not a symmetrical conflict. Israel is much stronger than Hamas, does everything it can uh, to take out the Hamas military capability while preventing loss of life to the greatest extent possible. Hamas, on the other hand, which is a thousand times weaker than Israel, if it had the ability, would destroy Israel. But it doesn't have the ability, so it sends everything it has, all of its you know, uh, um, military, uh, the missiles and, 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 and military equipment, uses everything it has to attack Israel and destroy Israel, and intentionally targets our civilian interests. So it's, it's not sending, it's not firing rockets on, on Israel military installations, military bases, uh, artillery bases, etc. All of its rockets, it's firing at schools, hospitals, uh, political institution, offices, purposely targeting civilians, which is another war crime. 
So we can't look at this as a symmetrical situation. We have a very strong party, which is doing everything it can to take out the, the military capacity of the other party while preserving hu human life. And then we have a very weak party, which is doing everything it can to attack civilians and, and destroy civilian infrastructure. Um, and, and both parties lose. Israel loses because it, it doesn't really want to go in and completely conquer the, the Gaza Strip. What's, what's it going to do with over 2 million Muslim Arabs that are not interested in its leadership or, or administration? It doesn't want that responsibility and shouldn't have that responsibility. So it doesn't really win because it can take out Hamas, Hamas rocket capability to the best extent possible for a certain period of time until this flares up again, right? And, and tries to do that as quickly as possible in order to, uh, to preserve its image in, in the diplomatic community, um, rightly claiming self-defense because of all these rockets that are fired. Hamas never really wins either because what it wants to achieve is the complete destruction of Israel, but it does not have the capability of doing that. So all it can do is fire these rockets. Why, why, why did it decide to, to create this escalation flare right now? Hamas started firing rockets on Israel because of a few reasons. Number one, there's a recent Supreme Court decision that came down regarding uh, 31 homes in East Jerusalem in which Palestinians have been living for several decades illegally, even though they were owned by Jews. Uh, they went into these homes and this went through proper judicial review and the court decided to uh, support the eviction of the, the Palestinian squatters. Uh, and, and recently, Jewish families moved into these homes that, that belong to Jews, so that, that upset the Palestinians. So at the same time as you have these evictions from the homes in East Jerusalem, uh, it's during the holiday of Ramadan where we have thousands of people coming to the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount in East Jerusalem to pray. And during this time, the police decided to warden off the stairs. Or it's kind of like an amphitheater around the Damascus Gate, for those of you who, who have seen that, where young Palestinians and, and Israeli Arabs like to sit in the evening when they break their fast for Ramadan. The police warden that off. So the Palestinians are saying, wait a second, you know, we have these evictions of, from these apartments or houses in East Jerusalem. The police are now limiting access to certain areas during Ramadan. And that came... Uh, at the same time as the Palestinian Authority declaring that it would cancel its elections. So a few months ago, said so we're going to have elections in the Palestinian Authority, which, by the way, for some reason, haven't happened for 15 years. Well, Hamas got excited about that because, according to their polls, they were going to, to win these elections. And then suddenly during Ramadan, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, said we're canceling our elections. We're canceling because Israel will not let Palestinians vote at voting booths in Jerusalem. Well, that's kind of nonsense because Palestinians have never voted at voting booths in Jerusalem. In the last elections in 2006, Palestinians from East Jerusalem that wanted to vote could just drive a few minutes down to Ramallah and, and vote there. Obviously, Israel is recognizing Jerusalem as, as its capital, um, has a problem with the Palestinians also voting there for the Palestinian Authority. And then Hamas, Israel was blamed for the cancellation of the Palestinian elections. So you have these, these evictions, you had the, the, the awarding off of, of the areas of the Damascus Gate at the same time that the elections were canceled. And Hamas was, was upset that the elections were canceled because it thought it would win these elections. And this created a perfect situation for them to create this incitement and to ignite this new um, warfare and intifada. Uh, against Israel. And from there, it, it just escalated and kind of uh, spun out of control. But again, uh, that's just a reason to, to attack us again, that, that it comes up every few years. There is some hope, I would say, uh, within Israel. I can tell you as, as a resident of the Judean Hills, I received an invitation to a, a solidarity rally that's going to take place tonight in which our Arab Israeli neighbors from Abu Ghosh intend to uh, uh, do a rally together with the Jewish um, communities in this area, including uh, Neve Ilan, Yad Shmona, Kiryat Anavim, En Chemed, uh, to meet next to the En Chemed Bridge and, and say, we are standing together as Jewish Israeli Arabs, standing against the inter-ethnic and inter-religious violence, and uh, we want to we wanna live together in peaceful coexistence. So there is another voice coming out in the Israeli society today, which, which gives a ray of hope where people are saying, you know what, if we're all created in the image of God, we, we should support solutions to the conflict that improve the quality of life of both peoples on both sides of, of, the, of the tracks and, and not demonize and delegitimize each other. 
from a kind of macro perspective, what is the hope? Are we doomed to forever have, you know, every four or five years, these military engagements uh, with Gaza? I believe and I hope that, um, that a solution will come through the intervention of some of our neighbors in the international community. For instance, if a stable, stable uh, Western friendly government like Egypt, which, is, which borders the Gaza Strip, was able to say, we're gonna take more responsibility and, and come in and bring law and order in the Gaza Strip with the backing of, of the international community, I think that could be uh, a fantastic solution. I don't know to the extent, I don't know to what extent Egypt is interested in this today. I, I got the feeling by reading between the lines that the Trump administration was was moving towards a solution like that by creating this 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 coalition of more moderate Western-minded uh, governments in the Arab Muslim world um, in order to start um, taking steps to create more law and order. In, in the Gaza Strip, uh, and uh, I'm not sure where the current administration stands on that, but I think that would probably be the solution. I don't see a situation in which Israel will actually go in to conquer and occupy uh, the Gaza Strip. It's not interested in that. So please uh, pray into these uh, points. Uh, as you know, many of you do pray for Jerusalem because we're instructed in, in, uh, in Psalms, in the scriptures, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I, I, I so much appreciate your prayers and your support. We do believe that, you know, as this, this, this situation flared up quickly, we do hope and believe that it also died down quickly. Obviously, because of the COVID-19 situation, there aren't a lot of tour groups which, which are being canceled right now because of the violence that broke out. Um, in fact, the, Israel is, is saying that it'll open up its borders for individual tourists who have been vaccinated to land here beginning in June. So I hope by that time, we're, we have this violence behind us, and, and tourism can get back on track, our economy can get back on track. At the end of the day, even though uh, there have been several uh, people wounded and, and even killed on the Israeli side, Iron Dome has been doing a fantastic job and uh, to really minimize um, you know, destruction of, of lives and, and, and property. And it's been working overtime with the thousands of rockets that have been fired at us. So. We're thankful for that. We're, we're thankful that uh, he who keeps Israel will not slumber or sleep. Thank you for tracking with us and praying for us. All the best.